Hello everyone and welcome back to more Crush to Insanity for the PlayStation 2. And in this episode we're going to be taking on Dot Cortex. Let's do it. Because why not? Surprised to see me, Crash. Like the fleas in your fur, I keep coming back. Three years I spent alone in the frozen Antarctic wastes. And I missed you. And so I've organized a little gathering, like a birthday party, except the exact opposite. And look, all of your friends are here. You are so very popular. Let's start handing out the presents. <laughs> okay, I don't know about you, but Tiny's model right there looks horrible. He looks way better in the PS1 version. <laughs> It just looks too realistic in that version. Also, uh, speaking of Crash Bandicoot and that, the one series that I've never actually played properly, I heard there's a lot of mixed feelings about it and things, but I don't know because I've never this really played it tiny. before, so I can't really say. But that's uh, Crash dial. of the Titans and you Crash, um, was it, Extra Mind Over Mutant and things. I don't know what they're like, because oh uh, I've never played them, I can't really tell for sure. I might try them out one day. I remember I think I tried out the DS version, but I don't think that counts because I did not have fun on the DS version of Crash Mind Over Mutant. It was not that great. Plus it's weird because after Crash Mind Over Mutant, that's it, things just, just died for the poor Bandicoot, you know? And then he just kind of died, pretty much similar to Spyro. And then eventually, you know, Spyro became a Skylanders. Pretty tragic. Well. At least uh, Crash Bandicoot, though, hasn't been ruined. I mean, even though he's not really around anymore, at least he is not a Skylander. That would make no sense in the world. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this boss fight is pretty simple. A bit hard at first, I guess, but I don't really have that much trouble with this guy. Because all you do is you just hit him and he falls right onto the spikes for some reason. Don't know why, but still. Beat your brand new, hydraulically operated, twin brother, Mecha Bandicoot! Yeah, what he said, and also we got engine right there as well, who was uh, controlling it and things. Now, let me just say, the soundtrack to this boss fight is blooming goddamn awesome, especially for a cappella, you know? This is from a cappella! All these drums and beats, and sounding like you're beating a boss, this is all by voice. This isn't by music or anything, you know? I just find this absolutely incredible for it. But the, the boss fights in this game, yeah, I'll admit, they're not really... The, the best or anything, but they, they're good enough. I mean, the gameplay mechanics and the, the whole soundtrack just makes that up, if you ask me. <laughs> also, there's not really much to say about this boss fight here. It's just engine trying to fire missiles at us, trying to kill us, but instead, we are the best, so we're just gonna kick this bandicoot, I guess. It's cool as well, because at the end, there's gonna be something cool that relates to this as well. Also, if you ask me, it looks like is that supposed to be snot? Because it looks like he's sneezing. If that's his attack, then that is hilarious. But that is him done and over with. I believe. With some weird cartoon reference here as well. Why is my neck stuck? <laughs> he was looking up for some reason. Lunch? Now here's where is the twin sanity side of gameplay is actually going to come in and if you ask me this is really freaking cool. So what happens is throughout the game you have like Crash Bandicoot and Cortex working, yeah, working together and things. But they do it in such a way that, oh I'm going to forget that life. Which actually makes sense because you know they're basically having a scrap down this rolling down it but you actually get to control them for moving around and things. I just love how it, you know, it relates to the plot, but also adds to a new gameplay mechanic, and it's one that isn't really annoying either. Also, uh, just because I feel the ninja in the morph, if you stand still, they get to do weird things, like at the moment, for some reason, Cortex is slam dunking his face into the ground. One of them is also a bit explicit, if I can get to do it. <laughs> Why that's a thing in the game, I don't... Yeah, yeah, that... <laughs> this one here. <laughs> Oh boy, why they decided to make that a thing, I don't know, but either way, I loved it as a kid, whereas nowadays I'm like, oh. 
maybe there's just some relationship between Cortex and the Bandicoot. I don't know. <laughs> oh well, it doesn't really matter. One thing I don't get though are these crystals here. Because they never really appear that much in the game after this bit. They just appear here for some reason. And I don't know why. Well, so this is called Cavern Catastrophe, I believe. I think most of the levels have... Um, I want to go this way because I think the gem is this way. If it isn't, then fine, I can always go back and go this way. But most of the levels, I believe, have, like, the names of um, alliteration. I could be wrong about that, but still, I always like <laughs> the titles of, like, of, like a alliteration of things. Because, it, I don't know, it just it makes it more funny and quirky. Now we're on this bit. Uh, which way do I go? I believe I went this way, I think. Yes, I don't know. If, I, if, I, if it's not this way, I can always go the other way back, but I am pretty sure that it's this way if I remember by memory things, because there should be um, a slope that goes down, so that way I can... Yep, there it is. Okay, fine. It was this way I to get the gym. There we go. Cool. So that was fun. <laughs> Uh, even though the, the, they're having a scrap, it's a really long scrap, mind you. I mean, look how long they've been fighting for. <laughs> I think they would have stopped by now. One of them must be in agony. But no, they just carry on fighting. I just love the game for my side of it. Especially one later, which was probably the best thing I ever saw as a kid, personally. And uh, some of you who have played this game, you probably know what I'm talking about. Do I want those? I'm gonna get one. Because now I have 18 lives. Have I been... Have I died once in this game so far? I better not say that though, because I'm probably going to regret that now. Touch wood, even though there's no wood around me, and I'm recording. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Also, when you get invincibility as Akuraku in this form, it is even more pointless, trust me. <laughs> because, I mean, yes, it does make you invincible, but it just looks weird if you ask me. Okay, that's all of the crystals done and stuff, so there's not very much else to do here. Also, the actual acapella to this, you know, just suits it really well. You probably can't hear it that well in this segment because of so many sound effects going on. If you just listen to it normally, it uh, will probably <laughs> be pretty nice to listen to things. So I swear it looked like I was about to fall off then, but apparently not. So that's fine by me. That's fine. I'm hoping my controller doesn't really pick up or anything because my PS2 is like going click to click all over the place <laughs> with the analog stick and things. But still, it doesn't matter. I think that's all the gems so far at the moment. Yeah, it appears to be. We appear to be good. But oh boy, this bit. Now this bit is usually where I mess things up because you actually have to continue going left, I believe, in order to get onto there. Otherwise you fall and then... Oh, yeah, I did it. Fine. Fair enough, that's good. I always... No, I forgot to click left. Damn it. Fine, I'm going to have to do it again. My bad. <laughs> Completely forgot about that area, but that's fine. At least I can show you a bit of the backtracking. Well, well. A power crystal. Ah, uh, well done, Cortex, for getting into a stupid situation like that, you clever clonks, you. <laughs> I suppose Cortex is the one who always gets into trouble in this game, mind you. None of the other ones, it's always just him. Crash Panicoot is just, like, watching and being like, oh dear, good thing I didn't do that. <laughs> I get a lot of the Star Wars vibe out of this, also, I think I need to get an Aku Aku, otherwise I'm gonna die. Some people call them whatever because I always call them Aku Aku, because it makes sense, he's called Aku Aku. Isn't it? <laughs> oh well. Also, wow, they're actually carrying the boxes back. I never noticed that till now. That's fine. Wait, um, wow, can you actually not hit me? There we go. I think that's all of them. It is, and they all die for some reason. Yes! The crystal is mine! Keep back, you weak-minded fool! Avert your gaze or you'll go crystal crazy! <laughs> the voice actor of Cortex, I don't know his name and stuff, but he does a really good job at his personality and things. And also, I suppose you could say, even though he's gonna go crystal crazy, that's if he takes crystal meth. 
Because that kind of makes sense, in a way. You know, it's nothing to do with crystals. I don't know why it's called that, but still. Another gameplay mechanic here, though. Instead of fighting this time, I'm actually, well, kind of holding his hand, but more of just holding the crystal. Also lives, yay. I can do with those. I didn't really notice those till now. But, um... If you press circle and stuff, you can just hit him like this, like a hammer, which is really cool. It just shows, you know, the rivalry between the two and things. Also, if you jump and press circle, you can toss him in the air, which makes kind of some sense. I believe, though, if you spin and then press circle, you can, yeah, you can just spin him like that. So he just sort of goes hurtling towards something. It just adds a bit of distance and makes things easier to get, I guess. Instead of just clicking X and then circle, you know? Throw me over there. Trust me. We're pals, right? Yeah, just like I showed you there. <laughs> now, why you have to show kindness, I have no idea, but even still. There we go. Plus, I guess just spinning and clicking circle is a lot quicker. Is there just seeing him soar through the sky and then having to pick him up again, you know? Much like uh, that gem over there, which I might get. See, look, that's with X and circle. He kind of just goes anywhere and you don't really know where he's going to land and things. Also, yeah, I was going to say, can you shoot that last one, please? And eliminate it? That would be nice. It helps, though, that he teleports and things. A lot of people... Well, uh, no, not, not a lot of people. Some people really hate this mechanic for some reason. I don't know why, really. I kind of like it. I mean, it shows, you know, the rivalry between the two. I mean, it's cool just realising that throughout the games, uh, oops, uh, Crash Bandicoot and Cortex have been rivals. But then they just work together, but sort of fight at the same time. So it shows, you know, they're sort of working together accidentally. It just really suits it well. And also we're back to fighting because hills. <laughs> That's why. I'm probably not going to bother too much with lives because I have like 21 of them so far. Wow. <laughs> That's different. Plus you want to be really careful on this bit. Now I will agree, if you just play this for the first time, you'll... What you're gonna do is just push downwards, because then you're just gonna go, you know, rolling down the hill. Then you're just gonna crash into those bunch of nitros and be like, how come I didn't see those? Mm, I guess. And then after a while you're just like, ah, this bit, I have to be a bit more careful and things. <laughs> okay, now why that was necessary for a cutscene, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, plus it's fun to just make him break stuff as well, things. At least the um, the lives, though, are still present in this, where when you collect a hundred Wumpa fruit, you know, that counts as to getting, um, you know, extra life and things, which is probably explained why I have a lot of them so far. But where is he? Oh, there he is. Fine. <laughs> At least when you hear the noise, you know that he's going to teleport towards you and things, but still. Um, wow, we're only at 13 minutes so far, and I've already nearly done the level. Which is a shame, because I'm going to have to do the level again. The actual layout to- where, where is the path? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I couldn't actually see where I was going then. Now, the actual layout to this LP, even though I said I will be getting all the gems, yeah, I will be doing that, but uh, as for how long the video's gone for, I don't know. Let's just say if I'm in a particular area and it goes on for more than 10 minutes, that'll be that area covered. But if it's a short area, then obviously uh, the episode will be slightly longer, I guess. I don't know, we'll just play it by ear on this one, okay? Because I really don't know how to make the layout uh, fair in that in this at all, really. Also, wow. Even in this area, I have not died once. This is going weird so far, but never mind. Plus, um, hmm. Do I want to hit that last box in order to get that? I will, anyway. I could probably bother with that, but actually, do I need to? I don't know if I need to or not, really. I don't know why Cortex disappears, but he just does for some reason. And that's slightly strange. We're actually already nearly done with like, the first world, because we've only got like a couple more segments, and that's about it. Also, can I, can I please jump on this, maybe? I want to I wanna jump, there we go, yeah. That's what I wanted to do. It's probably not necessary, but believe me, if you want more lives, just grind away on those blooming Wumpa fruits. Is it Wumpa? I don't know, you might say Wumpa, but I'm going to go Wumpa. Because I don't know, that's just how, I, how I've always pronounced it, I think. I mean, it makes sense since they go Woodabugger, not Wadabugger, you know. Let's look at the lighting effects, they look pretty sweet to this too. Given the fact that they hint towards acid, which makes kind of some sense, because, you know, the game I played last, Rayman 2, had acid in it. 
So that kind of... Oops, I missed that life. I don't really want it, but instead I'm just gonna die. <laughs> Never mind. Alright, there we go, right. After going to full life again, let's just go through. And I'm not even gonna bother with that uh, box this time, and Just die again, f***ing you know? I guess this also shows off like one bit of advice I guess to think. But when you make a jump, what I would recommend you do is because of the camera being slightly weird in this game, if you just move it down like this, you can kind of tell where you are in 3D space then, you know? That just makes it a whole lot easier for me. You know, it's a bit awkward because I'm gonna have to sort of move the right analog stick around at the same time in order to concentrate where I'm going. See, like this, you can actually see where you're gonna land, but the problem is then, because of me rotating it, it kind of just killed me. Either that or I just suck at this. I don't know. Well, so, what the... What the... What, 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 <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> is this what I mean by glitches? Because why is this something to complain about? This is complete genius right here. <laughs> anyway. Okay, you know what, forget it. Instead of just trying to land on things, I'm just gonna observe by my shadow just going past things. There we go. So then I can easily just escape and get outside of the area. That's by Mammy. Also, do I wanna... Do I actually wanna backtrack to Cavern Catastrophe? Um... Should I do that real quick? Well, you know what, I might as well. I'll just show you where to get back and things. <laughs> Was bursting in there. How are you fools? Before the awesome might of the evil twins. Aren't you too adorable? Let me see. I might have some chalky treats here for you. Chalky treats? Oh, oh, oh. We've some good news and some bad. The bad news? We're going to destroy your precious islands. The good. You won't be around to see it. How tiresome. Oh, you wanna play mind games? Okay, tough guy. <laughs> Let's play mind games. This is the part where you run away screaming. <laughs> Go on! Run! Catch you later, Brainiac! <laughs> Okay, that was a weird thing I just witnessed. His brain got pulled out by the ear. Reminds me of when apparently mummies could pull out brains through their noses. <laughs> Some morbid stuff right there. Oh well, at least it was a cartoon and stuff. At least he wasn't in pain and things, because that would have completely I mean, scarred me for life as a kid. <laughs> I mean, I played this as a kid, but not when it came out. I believe this game came out in... Uh... 2006. I think this game came out in like 2006, pretty much the same year as Sonic Riders, really. A year of a lot of underappreciated games, if you ask me. The PS2 in particular. But Sonic Riders wasn't really a bad game either, to be honest. Mine was Wrath of Cortex. Anyway, yeah, if you go this way, out of nowhere, these things rise for uh, some unknown reason, I don't know why. And you basically have to go all the way back. Some people absolutely hate this backtracking. But honestly, I don't see it being that bad, really. I suppose it's a bit stupid, given the fact that you just want to get one gem, but... Really, it's your own mistake for not really being that careful, if you ask me. So, so be it. Either way, I guess I'll fast forward and see you guys in a bit back to where that gem was. <laughs> Alrighty, let's do this right this time then. So what you're meant to do is move this way and then keep pressing left so that way you can easily fall down, fall down, and then collect the last gem. Therefore now that should be, yep, that's all of them. So actually wait, let me just check. Yeah, we got that one, we got that one, and there's only a couple missing because believe it or not, they're actually like in this bit here, even though they apply to that. That makes no sense in the web. Anyway, that's the end of the episode for now.
So in the next episode of Crush to Insanity, we're going to be continuing on from, you know, where we last went before the speeding up section happened. Also, yeah, there's that bit that was meant to happen. Why did the camera show that before? Take care, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'll oh, see you well. in the next one. Oh.